Hello and welcome back to Principles of Engineering. Uh, today we're going to be learning about electricity, uh, specifically voltage, current, and resistance and how they work together in a circuit. Um, so in your equation sheet, so 9.3 through 9.7, these are the equations that we're going to be using. So it would be handy to have out an equation sheet. You might want to make some notes on it as we go through. Uh, you're welcome to use those on the test, which won't be for a little while, but we will have one. Uh, so electricity is the movement of electrons uh, from, from place to place. It's really uh, an important source of energy because it's easy to transport through power lines uh, from one place to another to get from the power plant to the houses as opposed to something like hydrogen or uh, or a, you know, I guess, a natural gas, which they had to pump all these pipes for. Um, so and it can be easily converted into other types of energy, uh, motion via motors, sound and speakers, heat and light bulbs. Uh, so yeah, you can only imagine uh, our life without electricity. It'd be a very, very different place. Uh, so it's important to know a few things about it. Uh, the three big concepts that we want to address today are current, uh, voltage, which is also known as electric potential, I'll, I'll use the term uh, voltage though, uh, and resistance, and how they work together in this equation, V equals IR, which is voltage equals current times resistance. Um, so we can think of, of, uh, of electricity as a flow of electrons through some kind of conducting a material, typically a metal, and, uh, and uh, current is basically the flow rate of those electrons. So if we think of uh, this would be a less current over here, a slower flow rate, and over here we would have a higher current, a higher flow rate. So the faster those electrons move around, uh, the higher the electrical current. So it's a good idea to have that picture in your mind. The symbol for current is an I. Uh, and so in V equals IR, it's the I. Uh, it's the rate at which electrons flow. It's measured in amps, amperes, and the symbol for an amp is an A. Uh, and in the equation, the symbol for, uh, uh, I want to say electron uh, intensity, because that's what the I is from, uh, the word intensity. Um, the, uh, the symbol is I for current in, in V equals IR. Now, there's something a little screwy just from history, convention, that sort of thing. Uh, back in the day when electricity was first being discovered, we didn't really know about electrons. So they thought it was the flow of some kind of positive charge around around a, a conducting uh, material, uh, as opposed to what we know now as a flow of electrons, negative charge around around a wire. Uh, so there's what's the actual flow, which is current, which is flowing from the negative side to the positive side of the battery. But then then there's what's known as conventional current, and that's what engineers still use, and it's the flow rate of some mythical positive charge from the positive side of the battery around to the negative side of the battery. So uh, in most cases, it doesn't make a difference uh, as to what you what you use. Um, there would probably be a test question on which, which way would electrons flow and which way is conventional current, that kind of thing. But as far as problem solving, it's not going to make a difference. So uh, electrons are kind of like flowing water. If I have two tanks and they're at different levels and I've got a, and I've got a divider and I remove this divider, water is going to flow until these tanks level out, but then it's going to stop flowing once, once the water levels are, are both the same. Um, and because the pressure is balanced out, uh, if I want to keep water flowing, I need to pump water from the, from one side to the other side to keep a pressure difference. Um, so and that'll continue to allow water to flow through this through this uh, opening. Um, in uh, electrical current, we don't use a pump; we use a battery, and a battery is like an electron pump, or we use some kind of power transformer or something along those lines. But uh, batteries are like electron pumps; they they push the electrons around the uh, around the circuit. So uh, a pump creates pressure. Uh, that causes water to flow. A battery creates voltage. Okay, voltage is like water pressure. It's what pushes the electrons around the loop. So in V equals IR, voltage is the V. Uh, we can think of voltage as electrical pressure. And these are the things that I want you to know. Uh, and it's also, we haven't talked about this, it's kind of the energy that each electron has. It's the energy per electron. Uh, not not exactly, but but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, the concept is there. Uh, we measure voltage in voltage uh, volts, 
and the equation symbol is V and so is the unit V. So a 9V battery, uh, it's a 9 volt battery. So um, anyway, um, so when we have a, a, a this represents a, a circuit. So we're pumping, notice we're pumping the positive charges around. This is conventional current. Um, the battery pumps the electrons up, uh, pushes them around so that we have flow rate. And then they flow through this paddle wheel, which is a resistor. Uh, and that's when they lose, uh, they lose voltage. Okay, so they flow around, they go to the battery, they gain energy, uh, they gain pressure, and then they flow around through the wire uh, until they lose energy and they lose pressure. Um, so batteries supply two things. Uh, it, it pumps the, bat the electrons around, it also gives them energy. So here we've got these, uh, these empty trucks entering the battery and they leave with three volts of energy. Uh, which is technically energy per coulomb of charge, but uh, you can think of it for just as voltage for right now. Then they flow into this other battery and they get another three units of energy. And now they've got six units of energy. Okay, they, they, they pass along through the wire, they go through this light bulb, and that's when they dump off their energy and cargo. So these batteries are pushing the trucks around the loop and they're also giving, it, giving them their energy cargo. Um, the, the last one that we want to cover is resistance, V equals IR, so, uh, and that should make sense. Uh, resistance, uh, when you add a resistance to a circuit, it slows the amount of current down. It reduces the amount of flow rate. Um, so when you add additional resistance to a circuit, it slows the, it slows the current down in that circuit. It all, it's also where electrons lose their energy. Uh, it's measured in ohms. Um, and the symbol for uh, ohms when you when it's next to a unit or when it's being used as a unit is an omega, uh, and in the equation it's an R. So V equals I R resistance. So voltage, current, and resistance. So here we've got again that same picture. The battery is pumping up the voltage. Uh, it's causing the the electrons to move, um, or in this case the positive particles. And here we're flowing through a resistor. Uh, and we're, we're losing, we're losing voltage as shown by this decreasing in elevation. Um, and so we're losing energy. And it's also, this is also slowing down the current. If there was no resistor here, the electrons are, would be, would be flying around. Um, so resistors convert, uh, electrical voltage energy into other types of energy. Uh, very commonly it's heat and light. Uh, in a light bulb, that's what, that's what uh, that that happens. So uh, normally in a wire we don't want resistance because we don't want the electrons losing their energy until they get to their destination. Uh, and in their destination that's when we want them to dump off their energy like an electric motor or uh, a light bulb or a toaster or a radio or a computer or whatever. Uh, and that's where the electrons are giving their energy off to uh, to whatever it is we want to power. So. Um, so this is a, a super zoomed in picture of a light bulb filament, an old school light bulb. Uh, these are becoming uh, more and more scarce, but these are incandescent light bulbs. And what you see is that is a really, really skinny wire uh, and it's twisted and then the, the twist is twisted. It's pretty cool to actually look at. So what you're looking at is, uh, is uh, in, in a light bulb, it looks like a wire is actually a really, really uh, twisted spiral, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so in our, in our battery or in our circuits, uh, we're, we're going to have perfect wires and the wires are not going to have any resistance, which means that they're not going to lose any energy as they flow across the, the wires. Um, so again, you can see that once uh, we've got a six volt battery, so we've got a, a truck entering, it gets pumped up with six units of energy. It's pushed around by this battery and it flows to the, the light bulb, the resistance. And then the resistance, it's dumping off that electrical energy and it's getting converted to heat and light. Uh, and the light bulb is slowing, slowing it down. No, notice it's moving all at the same flow rate all around. The current is the same everywhere. Uh, but if I were to take this, this, uh, light bulb out, the current would flow even faster. Uh, so symbols that you're going to see in an electrical schematic are a zigzag line, which represents a resistor. Uh, these two uh, parallel lines, one larger than the other, uh, as a battery, and uh, the, lo the longer uh, of the two uh, lines is going to be the, the high voltage positive side. 
And then you're just going to see uh, little wire you know, lines which represent ideal wires. So there's no no resistance or voltage drop uh, across our, our ideal wires. Um, so similar to uh, water, again, try to use an analogy to make it make a little bit more sense. So if I wanted to have pump water around in a loop, I'd have a pump and I'd have pipes. Okay, and here I've got a skinny tube which is providing some resistance, which is slowing down the water flow. Okay, and then I have a valve to shut the, the flow rate on and off. Uh, on a circuit, we've got a battery instead of the pump. The, the battery is pumping the electrons around. We've got a wire instead of a pipe. And we've got a resistor instead of a skinny tube. It's a skinny wire. Uh, and then we've got a switch to control the flow rate on and off. Um, so when I close the switch, I get current flowing. And conventional current would flow from the positive around to the negative. Okay. And here we've got, uh, when, when I open up my valve, uh, my, my water flow rate goes. Uh, so the difference between open and a closed circuit, uh, a closed circuit is a continuous bat path, uh, conducting path from one end of the battery to the other. Uh, anywhere that that's interrupted, like here we've got a switch that's open, uh, that is an open circuit and that means that the current will not flow. Okay, we've already covered that. <coughs> okay. Um, now, a short circuit. If you have a continuous path from one side of the battery to the other and you do not have any resistance, okay, basically you just take a, a wire from one side of the battery to the other side of the battery, you have a short circuit because there's no resistor in there to, uh, to, uh, to slow the current down. Uh, and you have a lot of current and things tend to heat up. Um, so batteries, if you do this to a, uh, sp specifically more like a nine volt battery, it'll get really warm. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, I don't think it could explode, but you never know. Um, uh, not, not a good idea to do. So now these batteries, these, uh, these, these, uh, trucks are dumping off their energy in the wire. Um, so, uh, so Ohm's law, V equals IR. So volts, the voltage in volts current in amps, resistance in ohms. Okay. So if I solve this for I, I get I equals V over R. And what this equation tells us is that if I have a bigger V, okay, I make this side of the equation bigger, then this side of the equation is going to get bigger. So the more voltage I have, the more current I have. Okay. Now if I switch and I look at resistance, if I increase the resistance, if I make this number bigger, that's going to cause this quantity to get smaller. So if I increase the resistance, the current's going to go down. Okay. So voltage pumps electrons around, resistance resists it. Um, battery circuit resistance. So uh, let me pull up this website. <clears throat> Hopefully this will load. So um, what I've got here is I've got a battery, I've got a resistor. It doesn't look like a resistor, but that's what it's supposed to be. Um, and then I've got uh, a, a flow rate measure, a current measure. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the voltage. That's going to cause the flow rate to increase. So if I increase the voltage, the flow rate increases. Okay, I'll bring the current, uh, the voltage back down. Now I'm going to increase the resistance. Now if I increase the resistance, that's going to make it harder for the electrons to get through, and the flow rate's going to slow down. So now that slowed the uh, the the flow rate. If I decrease the resistance, we have a lot more current. So current causes flow rate to slow down. Okay, uh, voltage causes current to, to speed up. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So um, a couple a couple problems here. Your hair dryer is intended to run in a 110 circuit. Uh, if you plug it in a 220 volt outlet, what will happen to the current? So if I double the voltage, if I double this this V. I'm going to double this side of the equation. So if I double the voltage, I'm going to double the current. 
If I triple the voltage, I'll triple the current. Okay, so uh, they're just uh, it's just a simple relationship. Um, let's say I've got a nine volt battery, and what's going to happen if I take a, a, a ten ohm resistor and I swap it out with a twenty ohm resistor? What's going to happen to the current? Well, if I double the resistance, resistance causes the current to go down. So if I double the resistance, the current's going to halve. So that's that's the answer. Um, so um, this is going to be a little hard to do. Um, so um, so a nine volt battery is placed on your wet tongue and has a resistance of three thousand ohms. How many amps run through your tongue? Uh, draw a circuit diagram and and solve. Okay, I forgot I can I can do this. So nine volt battery. That's my voltage. Uh, three thousand ohms. Do you remember what we measured in ohms with our own mega? That is the resistance. And how many amps? What do we measure in amps? Okay, that's current. And what's the symbol for current? It's an I. So that's our question mark. Okay. So if we were to, uh, I'm not going to draw a circuit diagram for this one, but uh, so if we use our equation V equals IR, we get 9 equals uh, I, which is what I'm trying to find, times 3,000. We get I equals point oh oh three amps. Now, um, since this is a really small current, I can express it in milliamps. Milli means one thousandth of an amp. So this would be three milliamps. One, two, three, move the decimal place three times, four thousand, and that's that's the answer. <clears throat> okay. Um, an air conditioner is rated for 20 amps uh, through on a 120 volt circuit, what's its resistance? Okay, so we're going to solve this one too. So 20 amps, again, what do we measure in, in amps? That is our current, which the symbol for current is an I. Okay, on our 120 V circuit, uh, 120 volts, so that is our voltage. And we're looking for the resistance, which the symbol is an R. So we set it up 120 volts equals I times R. So we get R equals, um, that would be six, six ohms. That's my, my omega. Okay. Um, so that, I need to escape to get out of that. Okay. Um, measuring a current voltage and that using a, uh, a multimeter. So I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. Uh, it's a device that's used to measure uh, current voltage resistance and, and do some other things. They're, they're really pretty cool. Um, we probably, well, we may not get to use one this, this year. Uh, but I'm going to at least show you how they work. I, I want you to be able to know how to use one. Uh, and so this is what you do. So first off, uh, you, you turn the dial to the voltage setting. So there's V for volts. Uh, and uh, we're, I guess we're measuring DC, which means direct current, which, which means from a battery. Okay. Um, and, and then uh, we make sure our plugs are in the right places, uh, which in this case they are. So we've got it measured to volts DC. Um, so now what we're going to do is you just take the, 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 these two leads. These have metal tips. You just measure um, across it while the circuit's running. So here the circuit's running. Um, current's flowing around. Uh, my light bulb theoretically is lighting. Um, you just measure the current, the current across the battery. This should read 9 volts. Uh, and then to measure the, the voltage uh, across the switch, you do the same. And measure the voltage across the resistor, you just drop it, drop them in. You're like an outsider looking in. You can, with the circuits running, and, and you just put your, your, your probes in. Now, voltage is the, is the easiest one to measure, uh, and it's the safest. Um, 
what we can also do is we can measure current. Now, if we measure current, okay, we've got to put it in, now it's in amps DC. Um, so we turn our dial to uh, amperage. Um, and then what we have to do is we have to pull out one of the wires. So I have to disconnect a wire. And now the these, by the way, these go to the, this goes to the red and this goes to the black. Um, so now um, the current is flowing through the multimeter. I have got to get the current flowing through the multimeter to measure it. So now I'm measuring the current that's exiting the switch and it's going into the, uh, the resistor, which the current's going to be the same for this, this whole circuit. Uh, now when you measure resistance, what you need to do is switch to resistance. So uh, I've got ohms over here. So ohms for omega. And you have to disconnect the battery or take, uh, isolate the component. You can, uh, if it's a simple circuit, you can just remove the battery. Uh, if it's something a little bit more complicated, like take the, take it out of the circuit. Uh, and, and measure it just with the, you know, out of the circuit. So here we go, uh, we're measuring the resistance of the switch, which should read zero if it's, uh, if it's an, if the switch is closed. And measuring the resistance of the resistor, measuring the resistance of the light. Okay. Um, okay, so I guess we'll work one more problem. So we've got a flashlight, uh, it's, we've got a six volt battery, uh, we've got a 150 ohm uh, light bulb, um, and what we're trying to do is figure out the current. So, um, <clears throat> so we're going to use V equals IR again, or I equals V over our same same equation, and we plug in six volts for our voltage, 140 ohms for our resistance, uh, which gives us 0.04 amps or 40 milliamps. Okay, and that's where we're going to end for the day. Sorry, this was a little bit longer of a notes, but it is what it is. All right, see you. Uh, be good.